thank you all for coming. <laughs> Wasn't really what to expect, so don't do main public speaking, so I'll do what I've got. There's not very much to talk about, because to me and all of us, it's normal for us now. So if you have any questions, please just ask, like, proper open book. So any questions, just generally please just ask. We're to answer. We'll answer. <laughs> so we're six in the bus. Um, we live in this green double-decker, um, which is named Kiki, but everyone seems to forget that. Just out the window, quite literally, yeah, literally. the sun. <laughs> so it's a 1979, 89. Uh, no, 1978. 1978, yeah. <laughs> Name a fleet line, um, which was in service in West Yorkshire, PTE, back in the day. It spent not many years there, it only actually did eight years in service. As many of you know, DDA compliance with disabled abilities, obviously for wheelchair access came into play. So these types of buses didn't last very long. So from there, it got brought out by Yorkshire Rider. They ran it for a few years. Then it went to Wirral Transport Museum where it became sort of a art exhibit. So the seats were taken out at that point and they used it to advertise shows at events and wrapped it in a really random uh, black wrap. Um, they used it for many years. It then got sat in a car park for six years with tyres on the roof, buckled all the roof in, and it was then taken up to the White Rose Bus Group in um, Wakefield, where it was going to be a museum project for themselves. Obviously, COVID hit, and people that were going to pay for this museum were out of work. The rent wasn't being paid on the bus, so it was going to go to scrap. Um, scrap value on a double decker bus is about 1,500 quid. So we paid 1,500 quid for the bus, um, in which we then took it on um, to do something with. So I used to be a bus driver many moons ago. Um, you say many moons, like you're really old. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about six years ago. <laughs> so we, as a family, we already owned a de double decker bus, but it was preserved just as a bus. Um, and we looked after it and took it away for the day to Scarborough with friends and family. Um, so a little bit of a back bus, background to buses. Um, the idea was obviously there have been six of us, as you all know probably Travel Lodge has only let six, um, five people stay in any one room, so if we go anywhere we have to buy two rooms and we always end up sleeping in the same room, so I'm paying for two and only using one. So the idea was basically to chuck <coughs> two beds upstairs, just to sleep in a kitchen downstairs and use it for, for nights away for the kids, or to save a bit of money. Um, then things happened so basically oh yeah push the next slide I'm, I'm going on about the slide aren't I <laughs> sorry we've not rehearsed this this I was don't. just a uh, we'll wing it sort of thing sorry about we do apologise <laughs> oh there we go one second <laughs> one second <laughs> me being me I always the internet for everything so work's all internet based for me so I thought when I get it I'll just knock the presentation up after what I want to talk about and I have no internet so <laughs> half past one this morning when no one was on the internet I managed to get on the internet to download it but as a movie so you have to keep pausing um, I'm Conrad this is Nicole are you going to say your name? Phoebe Phoebe is the eldest how old are you Phoebe? Eight Eight then we've got a set of twins which is Summer and Poppy we're hiding Poppy's hiding front and this is Luna and yeah so that, that's us Nicole's definitely the organiser, I'm not organising the slightest. Anyone, I own my own businesses and everyone at work hates me because it's all last minute and they organise me. As you can tell from the presentation. presentation yeah. <laughs> Next slide, Poppy. <clears throat> can do it for me? Space bar? That's the one, yeah. Maybe we should do it. There you go. So, we'll go back a little bit because I've got a bit in front of myself. This is our old house. We were renting, so a three bedroom house. Nice cold sack on the back of a golf course. The kids were finding golf balls and getting knocked out when they came over the fence. <laughs> but we were paying in excess of £1,600 a month with rent, gas, electric, water, council tax. And Which is quite cheap, I think. <coughs> it is relatively cheap. In some parts of the country. But, but to us, but our wages didn't, weren't, were they, weren't showing that. No. We were. So as self-employed, trying to get working after COVID was difficult. We had like 20 staff on the books at the time, keeping them employed. I wasn't taking a wage. So each month was getting tighter and tighter. Nicole was working at retail at the time. So we were managing day to day, but living literally day to day. It's not how I wanted to live. Paycheck, paycheck, and it was just, yeah, yeah it was. 
it got to the point where after COVID, where it was a struggle, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so, a struggle. Yeah. And then our landlord decided that one day he'd turn up and just put a for sale board outside the house. Mm -hmm. so, so we kind of had to think of a plan B. We knew that we weren't gonna be able to get a mortgage because like, we didn't have any savings. And then that's where the whole bus idea came from because we were part of that bus group. So that idea was in front of us daily, wasn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> After a drink on a Saturday night, we sort of said to each other, well, I said to Nicole, we should move on to the bus full time. Nicole's a bit apprehensive, obviously, four kids in quite like small spaces, <laughs> don't to the best of times. And if you can see from like, they're, they're all over the show, that's just how they are in their own little wonderful way. So we decided that we would go with the bus and we would sort of make it work for a period of time and see how we got on. So, oh, so you pause <laughs> No, stop it. Stop. That's it. That's it. So we got to the conversion. So we went up one Saturday, and basically, if you look at the top right hand picture, that's pretty much how the bus was inside when we picked it up. There was no seats in it, it was just basically a frame. It was sort of semi converted for the museum, so in there was like a diesel heater and TV screens, but I'm talking about the big Panasonic big fat TVs that I've not seen since I was a kid, I hardly remember. So we started stripping it all out. Um, we went back to the actual shell of the bus. The roof had caved in the top where the tires had been sat on the top, so we had to push it all out to get it back to shape. Um, this is how it looked as well. Um, the cupboard started sanding it and priming it on the front, and it took all the wrap off it. So we actually converted the full bus in a year and one month, mainly working weekends, so Friday to Sunday night. Um, we weren't allowed to stay at site when we did it, so literally it was like get there at 8 in the morning, leave at sort of half 6 at night. Nicole was normally at work. Um, no, I can't say that I did much of this conversion. <laughs> it was definitely the comrade and the kids that did more than me. So yeah, the kids have had very much of a part to play. Yeah, so they've definitely helped build their homes, yeah. which I think they all really enjoyed doing. There's also lots of graffiti underneath all the woods where they've signed the names a million times. Just one second, calm down. Sit down, please. So we started by stripping back down to the main shell. Um, we, we found not a lot of work actually needed doing to the bus. It'd been sat outside for a long time. And we were worried with the fleet lines, they're pretty much no bearing bad rot, bad chassis. Um, they get very soft over the finch pins at the back of the bus. So we had it up in the air, we took a needle gun to it, which is like sticks of metal that fire right out of the gun really quick. We had it on the full chassis, took all the old paint off, all the grime, and literally we had no soft metal. The chassis was actually in really good condition for its age. We had one outrigger, which is, comes off the chassis arm to the end of the bus is like a structure, had a bit of a hole in, so we got back to some good service and we just patched that and had a welder do that work. Um, so we stripped it all down, all the roofs come out, uh, chopped my finger off in the process. Um, didn't go to hospital at the time, which was a good one. So my finger now just has no fear in it from here up, and it just dangles off, which is great. <laughs> but we fully insulated. We went with tin foil insulation. Um, we were advised against it by some people, and some people said to do it. The reason we went with it is there's so many knocks and nanny cannies to get into on a bus, where the, obviously the run metal runs across. I wanted to make sure we got a good seal around it, so we used the foil. Um, it works pretty well. We don't get condensation, the bus breathes nicely. There's lots of windows to open to let obviously air it out. From that, um, money starts to get tight again. So the stripping out was relatively cheap. It cost us just a skip to get rid of everything. So we started talking to people and through work, talking to businesses to see if they had any like off cuts of wood that we could use for walls and stuff. Um, so we got a lot of materials reused, started looking on eBay and Gumtree and Facebook for things that necessarily might have been used but then got rid of. So like um, our solar controls, the only thing we brought new along with the toilet. Everything else on the bus was either donated, gifted, fixed if it was broken or brought second hand. Um, so that helped keep the cost down for us. The other issue we had with the conversion because I was doing it on a budget was I would start one thing and then run out of wood. So then I started on something else, which is very much me because I get bored after 10 minutes of doing anything. <laughs> so at one point we had two bedroom walls half built. Then I started the bathroom, chopping out the units to put the bathroom in. So 
it, it was messy. It wasn't one of these bills when you yeah, see. Yeah, we, we didn't plan anything, did we? No. We had no blueprints or anything. We literally just would screw in a wall. Yeah. We didn't like it, we'd take it out. Take it out. Else. The upstairs will have been almost come for a time, and there was spaces that have been in already. The walls came down three times <laughs> and then put back up three times. Because um, I actually measured the bed wrong as well the second time, which was my own fault. But we got there. Um, we didn't say no to the kids to doing anything. So, rightly or wrongly, my type of parenting, two of the older ones were using the mic saw, cutting the wood, learning how to cut and using the wood. Obviously, I was supervising them, but they've learned how to use them sort of tooling to do the wood. So, if you go upstairs, there's bits of wood that are a bit short, but the kids are cut them. And they'll tell you when you go back that bit wrong. But it's a nice little story that the kids have got yeah. and they use. So yeah, we gave them one month. It was sort of a bit rushed towards the end. Probably like, right, so this is this is how the bus was about a month and a half after we started it. I, I'm, I'm shy as hell. I don't like talking, I don't like being on social media. And the friend started TikTok at work and said we should do a video. So this is what we did. It's only 20 seconds long, but this is how the bus was. Are you gonna press play on the camera? Out of the camera. Come on. Move. Move out of the way. Please. <laughs> 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 so it's really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sorry. Sorry. That's it. 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 Which has been great because TikTok now pay us to put videos on and we earn a revenue from that. We'll come to that later on. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> so, that was how it went then. If you look at TikTok, there's the build as it goes along, but it's very bitty where I've recorded bits where I've remembered to record. We tried YouTube, filmed all in the wrong way every time. So, there's not much on YouTube either. So, the build's very much picture based. Um, this is the video now of how it looks. So yeah, so you can see the videos between obviously how it started and how it ended up. Um, I've done a little bit on costs because we get asked a lot. I tell you the question we get told the most on TikTok from that video of last is the beds look like shelves for the kids. They are deceivingly looking small but I actually fit in the back ones. And me and Nicole went to a Christmas party parked outside the pub at Christmas. Um, rolled in after a few drinks, actually slept in the bum beds instead of our bed for some reason. <laughs> I think we're going to prove everyone wrong that you can fit in these beds. I'm just going to wait because the one looks little there. Yeah. Yeah, they've got fits in the smaller ones, so they are deceivingly big for in there, so there's plenty of room. So obviously, the bus cost us £1,500, it was due to be scrapped, um, but Corey put a stop to it. Anyone to have a guess how much we spent overall? If I've told you already because I recognise some faces, I'll have to take some guess what you think it costs us to convert. Including the price price of the bus. 
Have we got any? Anyone want to have a guess? Oh, sorry. Yeah, including the 1500s. Now we've got, I shall tell you a bit what we've got on there. So there's a five and a half metre awning. Now if you're fan lifers as we all are, you know how much the awnings are. There's a kilowatt and a half of solar on the roof. Um, we didn't buy batteries, so we're still running two lead bus batteries. Um, we have got a nine kilowatt di um, diesel litre. It's nine. We had, yeah, we had to refurbish it as well. And then we've got a nine, kilo, a nine kVA generator building as well. 25, yeah, anyone else? Five. How much? Five. Five? Twelve. Twelve, that was the closest. So we got changed from 10 grand to do everything. The most expensive bit was the, the wood. So made a mistake after a hangover going to Wix's, buying some slap woods, and then having to continue with the same wood throughout most of it. The manager was on first name terms with me when I finished. Um, so yeah. In terms of converting it under 10 grand, so for us in 10 months' time, we're now eight and a half months in. I've paid for that in what I would have paid in rent. So I'll own something and not be having to worry about that sort of rent anymore. The big question we always get is running costs. Now, for us, I don't keep an eye on it anymore. I work still for my own businesses, but I don't have to worry about taking as much money. I literally, the money I take goes spent on the kids and just general maintenance on the bus. Um, we come from Sheffield to come here, we did 130 miles. I filled up with the local um, shell garages as we come in, 66, £68.18 it cost us. Was it oh, 63 18 sorry my eyes are going bad. £63.18 was the fuel bill to get here for 130 miles. It only does 40 miles an hour, it plods, it is slow. <laughs> um, it, it will go on the motorway and sit at 40, it'll do 45 but it starts to rattle and I can feel it in, as you're going down the road. So we tend to stick to 40. So we're very much a plodding vehicle, but we get anywhere we want to go. Um, in terms of, I'll do the next slide, it comes onto the next slide. Just wait for it to change and then press the space bar again. Has it dropped? So life on the road, oh, sit down. That's it, you've done it, great job. So life on the road, the question we get is how do we park something so big? Now, we don't get to go down, if anyone's been to Filey, on the seafront, I can't get it down there because it's just too narrow. Everyone parks on the corners, I can't get it round. But what we do have is we have a car. So we use the car for going to like supermarkets, taking the kids to school, um, and general day-to-day -day activities. The bus gets parked up somewhere, it's nice and safe, out of the way, um, and then we use the car to get in. The next thing for us is to get rid of the car, buy a van, and then have the van to use to get in further. But the amount of places we've got the bus, that you wouldn't think you could get it. McDonald's car park on a Sunday morning, eight car parking spaces, but I get it in and it gets back out again. Winds a lot of people up, but again, it gets in. The top right corner is actually Alvin's car parking rod room. It's the smallest car park in the world. There's about 10 cars, but we managed to get the bus in again. Once you're driving something of that size, it becomes very natural to get it into a spot. It's like when you get a bigger car, you've gone from a car to a bigger van, you get used to driving it. So when I've been driving, 40 foot but this foot, that bus is only 30 foot which some motorhomes are 30 foot when you're driving a 40 foot bus running a little country lane into a little village you're used to the tight corners and dealing with people that are parked on the corner so for us we don't particularly find it hard to park up when we first moved on it was a challenge sorry so when we first, it was a challenge when we first moved in we went out in the car trying to find park ups around the local area and we struggled. We couldn't find places to put it because I was driving around in a, in a six-seater car. Couldn't find anywhere. As soon as we were on the bus, we had about five or six locations that we could stay. We started driving around the bus and they just sort of turned up. These spaces that we didn't see before um, appeared. So the example is, um, you saw a picture earlier, we're parked outside Magna, which is a science room in Rotherham. There's actually six park-ups within a five-minute walk of Magna that we can use. We don't use them all the time, so we use one, then go somewhere else for a couple of weeks, go back and use the second one. We only do two nights in one place, so we don't become a feature anywhere. Everything's took with us like anyone would do. We don't leave a mess, you don't know we've been there. Um, so we tend to do two nights, then move sort of two, three miles to the next location. Doing it that way, it keeps our cost down in the summer to about five pound a day to live on the bus. That's what it cost us. In the winter, when we're running the generator a lot more, obviously with solar not being as reliant, and having to run um, the diesel eater, we're about £12 a day. 
So in terms of what I was paying rent to what I was paying now, we're starting to feel the benefit now where we can say a lot more to the kids that they can do stuff. When you've got four, it's expensive. Soft play cost me 50 quid. And that's without going for drinks and foods. So now when they want to go to soft play with their friends, they're invited. It's, yes, you can go, that's no trouble. Where before it was so like, I need to know a month in a month to make sure I don't have to buy this. Um, so it, it certainly allowed us to do a lot more. And it's not the kids by no means are not spoiled at all, but they get said there's a lot more. Yes, too, they can do nice things. Like they come today, this weekend, and they've actually, they won't spend the money. They've had 25 parties for the weekend, and they've, they've brought what they like. They've, they've had food, they've brought their own food. If they wanted to, they had a crepe the other day because they wanted the crepe. And I've not had to worry about funding that. They've, they've had their own money to do it, which is nice. Issues on the road, their tyres done. Now, a tyre for the bus, a budget tyre is about 395, a decent man, a decent brand tyre like Michelin's about 500 quid with that. We've learned while I've been on the bus to talk to people. We've got a good surrounding community, obviously from the other bus people that we can get advice for fixing things. But the local scrapyard that takes buses in gets damaged buses from the insurance company. Now, there was a 72 plate bus with 400 miles on that got sideswiped by an Arctic. Um, written off straight away and literally they could have bent it back out because of what it is they won't do it if you're hitting a bus and it's substantial it's a goner we got six tyres plus two spares for, for 400 quid and he, he charged me 95 quid for fitting them which is great so for the price of one tyre I've now got spares and a full set of tyres but it comes with issues we got home parked up stayed two nights come back to a flat tyre it had an, the valve had collapsed as he put it in not noticed so it's leaked all the air out it then took us three days to get someone to come out and fix the puncher for me. Um, we've not invested in the gear yet to lift the bus. Um, so, because we're not a corporate company that's got 20 million trucks on the road, we're not a priority. So, a little bit of social media, they actually came out next day. Which we're not going to complain about, but to be fair, they call, the charges are called out charges 80 quid, and they didn't charge us for the repair, they just fixed the tyre there and then. And it's been alright since. But we've now got an account with the company that came for the business, so that it, it allows us to have that bit more reliability from them. We also lost throttle, coming out of Morrison's petrol station, we were able to accelerate the bus. And all it was, was we run out of hydraulic fluid. I thought it well, was told and took the judgment that it was an air throttle. It was hydraulic, run out of hydraulic fluid, never been checked. Um, so pulled inside the road, ran the mobile mechanic. 20 minutes later, we were off again. Sleepsy undid it with the spanner, played it up again and we were off. So it comes with its challenges like any van, for me, it's just a big car. It takes oil, it needs water, you need to check your normal maintenance things. It just costs a lot more if it does go wrong. Um, in terms of parts of the bus, they're hard to get. I'm not going to lie to you. If I need something, it's normally a takeoff job and have it refurbished. Um, the scrapyards now ring me if they get one come in, which is great, and I go up and strip them. So we have got quite a catalogue of parts now for it. It's got a gardener engine in it which are bomb proof if anyone knows the marine engines. It's the same one that's in the marines doing this. Um, someone that actually worked for Mr. Gardner at the factory is my engineer for the engine. So he turns up every couple of months, gives it a quick tune up and just checks everything over. Um, sorry, I'm waffling because I've got so much to, to, to say. Um, the bus is MOT and tax exempt because of its age. Um, obviously when you're driving something around that heavy with your kids in it, it's not something you don't want to get MOT'd. It's difficult to MOT, so you can get them done, but to get it MOT, because there's obviously no ABS, there's no emissions, so we chose to have it inspected. Um, so we take it to a garage and they inspect it, which the big bus companies do. So the uh, bus and service will be MOT yearly, but it's checked on a, on a schedule. So some, some are three weeks, some are six weeks. Um, so we have a six week inspection, so we don't do lots of mileage when we're local. Um, and he checks all the brakes, the tires, um, anything that you'd check on it, he does for us. If he needs anything, he gets on with it because we now save the pot of money that allows us just to have that work done. Um, so it's nice not to have to worry at the end of the year that I've got to have MOT and I'm going to find a whole load of problems and the house then is not be able to move. Um, anything else? Do you want anything you want to add? Question we ask a lot. They're still home. They are not homeschooled. They still go to school. So we've got Poppy who's waiting for an assessment for autism. So we've waited three years for the assessment and we're very close to the top. So we didn't want to drag her out of home and out of school at the same time and then miss her assessment. So they are still at school. Luna's partially deaf as well. 
um, and also getting tested. So we're sort of just trying to get that sorted for them first before we drag them out of their routine. There's very much routine, so they go to breakfast club at eight o'clock in the morning. They do their scheduled lessons at the end of the day, I pick them up at the end of school. So at the minute, we're very limited where we go. Weekends and holidays, we disappear, which is lovely, at 40 mile an hour, so we go as far as we can. Um, and then obviously when we get like half times like this, we come to, to wonderful festivals like this and meet you lovely people. So yeah, it's definitely come with its challenges, but for us as a family, the, as much as they're still running right now, they're much more chilled. Like Poppy can express herself how she wants to on the bus and she's got her own space to do that. We get asked a lot, there's not much privacy on the bus. We had a three bedroom house, as you see, and they all slept in the same room, in the same bed most nights. Twins always just slept together when they were younger anyway. But then you find Luna jumping in with Phoebe. So for them to have their own bed now in there, which they do actually sleep in their own bed now, they do a lot better being closer anyway. Keeps it warmer as well in the winter. <laughs> Any questions? And please ask because I'll answer anything. It's a proper open book. Go for it. Yes. Do you find any? Do you get permissions or do you have any legal? Do people come and say you can't park here? Right? Yes. Yeah, so we're now near nine months in, and I've not once been moved on. Right. So we're very lucky in that aspect. Sheffield, if anyone's been to Sheffield, it's very industrial still. So lorry drivers are everywhere. They're parking up for the brakes. So we've got biomass plants everywhere. The still works are still operating. So in that aspect, I think we're quite lucky where we are for that reason. Yeah. The third night in, we got stopped by the police. We're down in Rotherham. And it's more of a welfare check. They've not seen it before. There's lights on inside at half past 11 at night. There's like, everything all right. We're like, oh, we live on the bus. Yeah. Um, and they're absolutely fine with us, no issues. We had one incident when we were in a little, it's like a dead end road in like oh, an industrial yeah. estate. There's a car garage around the back and we sort of park around the corner where you, the road sort of ends but nothing ever got built. Um, police come flying down and one of the kids woke up and like, police just gone past. I said, oh, it's all right. Well, they had the blue lights on. I was like, was it you? Yeah. Then, then, then another one comes and another one comes and another one comes and like, oh, something's kicking off. And all it was is there was someone on the railway line nicking the left and they took the drone up and they'll find a draw and they just come over and they had a chat with the kids, the kids come down because it was exciting and absolutely fine, there's nothing like you need to move on or you can't do that, they'll very fair and no issues. At Christmas we had a brick thrown at the bus while I was driving, now if you've been a bus driver, yeah you come in a minute, yeah, if you've been a bus driver you get things thrown at you all the time, I had sledges thrown at me when I was driving from Maltby when I was a driver, so you're used to that, you don't ring it in, you just move on and get away with it. Someone actually rang it in, I saw it happen. So I'm in the gym having a shower and an ex-bus driver is now a policeman picked the pole up. He's like, are you in your room? I was like, yeah. And he goes, have you been park gate? He's like, I'm in the gym in the shower. He goes, I need to come and see you. So basically someone reported because it it's an active case that had to come out. They took the CCTV footage off the bus. I wasn't bothered. There was no damage. Kids being kids. Unfortunately, that's what they do nowadays. But is that, apart from that, in terms of trouble, we have very little. There's morning people, what we call vegetables, what I call them vegetables, bus spotters, that come and take pictures and want to ask what bus, because I put it on a private plate, because they love taking registration plates, and I change the plate to wind them up a little bit. But if you do look, there's an Easter egg in the staircase, you can see the original registration, because I put it in, in the board. But yes, in terms of parking up, once you found them, we don't park at the outside someone's house. Yeah, we're outside of business that it's closed at five o'clock and we're not in till six, seven. So there's no one there. Then by next morning, they come to where we've gone the next day. One thing to come up guess on that as well is with my line of work, I work with a lot of local businesses. So for example, the Transport Museum in Rotherham allow us to park out the front of there. They like it, it's a bit of security because there's always someone there. And when they go home, we're sort of there and it works for them. Poppy spotted a fire the other week on the other side of the, of the, of the railway line which very well could have spread across to their unit and just ran the fire brigade while I rang them. They come and put the fire out again. We've got a thank you off them and a nice little thank you note for the sort of looking after it. So we've met some wonderful people doing it. We've got a Christmas card off the car garage where we parked up as well, which is quite fun. Next question. Yeah. Not a nice subject. No. Waste disposal. Waste, yeah, it's a great <laughs> question. So we're on the slung with a waste tank. Quite fortunate um, with my office, we've got a waste, I've put a waste disposal unit for grey water in there for like washing up liquid and all your hand soap. We went with a cassette toilet at the time. With the young kids, it's easy and it's easy clean. But in Rotherham, there's actually four sites where we can dispose of that. 
um, for free. So when we're there, we can dispose toilet waste and we can fill up with water at the same time. So at the minute, it's not a problem. When we start moving further fields, it's going to be something we need to look into. And we probably would change the toilet for something else. We've been looking at incinerating toilets that run on the gas and burn everything. It's interesting, um, mm -hmm. something we've looked at. So by all means, it's not finished. It works for us at the minute now, um, but it, things will change when we start moving outside of them areas. Yeah. How to manage not having a home address? Yeah, no good question. So, don't answer it. Yeah. You got it. So it gets sent to yours. Yeah, so your grandma's address. So it's a care of address to my parents' house. Um, so that's normally my driving license and bank. Uh, the rest of it goes to my office address for the business. Um, so my HRMC bills and taxes will go there and they've paid through that as well. We have got a PO box that we've not used. Um, just thinking in hindsight at the time we don't actually need it. So just care of address and the business address is what we use. There is businesses out there as well that we found that are like business centres and you can just rent an address as well. It doesn't work for your driving licence but your other mail you can get sent there and they'll post it out to you to someone that you want it sent into or collect it from somewhere. The post box, I don't know if you see them at like Morrison's, these candidates you can get stuff sent to, they're fantastic. If we get something sent through eBay, Amazon, we get into the box and we just collect them on its way through. And just eat, we get asked that a lot, they do deliver to a bus and a van. <laughs> just tell them where you are and no, they will come and find you so you're not without a takeaway either. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, so I do print and distribution. So we do design and print, um, which is terrible because I brought no stickers either. <laughs> like typical builders don't do no building. But, so we do print and design. We've got um, office staff that do all the design and all the printing. And then we've actually got a team of about 20 staff that do the walking and distribute the items in Rotherham. So as well as obviously having stayed local, we've had to adjust the business to allow me to sort of take a step back and have people that are already there sort of run the business and look after the staff so I can start pulling away a little bit. I've not been in for a few weeks now. I've just toddled in and out and they're doing fantastic. And it's, it's running really well. But again, it's just that transition period. It's a lot moving from a free bed house to that and then dealing with the issues. Obviously work, making sure that's the worst, obviously the kids were school. So we sort of staged it in. So I can't say we went hardcore from day one, um, but we sort of tried to make it as fair for the kids. And for me, as long as the kids are happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, and we asked them regular avenue change. So there's been a few things they didn't like in the bus. They wanted the swing. You've probably seen the swing on the side of the bus. Mm -hmm. We've managed to put these things in. Um, they want a curtain next across the room, this one. So we've got a curtain rail. My mum was making up some curtains that we brought material for, so when we get back, we'll put the curtain in first. So she's got even more sort of space in there. That's hers as well. Just those little things. The other three aren't bothered because they just, you can hear them when you sat downstairs in the reading area at the back, the floor creaks. So you can hear them like tipping out of bed to the next bed and then you hear the thump from the upstairs. <laughs> Who's out of bed? No one, no one. <laughs> well, they are, you can hear them croaking around. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yes, I do both of them together. So, because it's a bus, the um, no, but no seat belts. Never was any seat belts on it. It's still classed as a bus because it's classed as a historical vehicle now because of its age. DLA will not change that. We've tried. It is what it is. So I drive on a bus license. They sit where they want. The rules are they don't go upstairs. There's a cab door, which you might see, which blocks the cab off. If I've had a drink, I'm not in control of the vehicle. When we're driving it, that swings around, blocks the stairs off, so they can't get upstairs. Um, but then they tend to sit on the two bus seats at the front that are already there, and they sit at the back, and they call sort of floats between the two of them, depending who wants her at that time. Um, the car, so yeah, the car follows behind, so Nicole drives the car, I drive the bus. Um, a bit problematic if I fall poorly and I can't drive a bus, it's a bit of an issue, so Nicole is going to look to take a bus licence which now we've got the savings to be able to do, she can afford to do that, which is great. But the car is going and we're looking, well today we've seen, well this weekend, many fans that we're considering to add to the bath. So Nicole misses the bath. That's what she misses the most about not living in the house is the bath. So we'll probably just get a van with like a bit more space for me to do a bit of work and put a bath in it. Big water tank, but we'll deal with that at the time. It's a challenge. So yeah, that's what we're considering doing. But I won't, I won't like it. we do take it to us to do the food shop because the bus was made to run, it's not made to sit, it was made to work 13, 14 hours a day and rest for six. So if you leave it today, it will probably start, it won't struggle to start, but I'll have to open up the valves on the engine to let a bit more fuel in for it to fire. 
because it's sat for three days. Normally, I run it every other day just to keep it loomed up, I should say, and keep it running. But yeah, so the car's going, but there'll be something else. Be with me and my day van. So if we do go to like Filey, the one place I've never got, um, <laughs> park the van in the, bus in the park and ride, then we'll take the van in um, down to the seafront. So we've still got what we need on us, but not as big. <laughs> Did you struggle with getting insurance? How do you... Yes, yeah, so insurance was an interesting one. Um, I used to have modified Beetles, like rat rods, so always used to dealing with weird things with insurance. So we tried Adrian Flux, which they're great, but they're very picky. We ended up going with a company called Airplan, they're a broker. Basically, oh. I had a two hour conversation with them. What's on the bus? What are you doing? I explained absolutely everything that was on it. Um, and three days later they came back with a quote and it was £80 a month <coughs> which I don't think our car costs us more to insure than yeah. the bus um, so in terms of what we're doing I think it's a reasonable price um, and everything's declared to them and they check them with us every couple of months just to check the mileage um, because it is on a low mileage policy because we don't go very far and we just check the mileage and we can adjust that if we need to go further afield but yeah so insurance is, it is challenging um, a lot of people asked us this weekend about driving a bus on a car license. So if the bus is over 40 year old, there is loopholes where and grey areas where you can possibly drive it on a car license. If you Google it online, it's all there on the DVL website. Trying to prove to an insurance company you can drive such a vehicle without the license is difficult. So it can be done, but I wouldn't advise it to people without sticking a license. It's a big vehicle to move and it's a big vehicle. The wheels are sat behind you. Most of you probably know your old drivers more than likely, but when you're turning you've got to go half a foot forward before you even start to turn or as your back wheels up the curb because obviously the wheels are sat behind you <coughs> so you start turning before you're at the junction you strike the car on the side so it's just little things like that and the brakes are air pressured air brakes so they operate slightly different especially on something of that age you've got quite a bit of travel before you hit anything and then you're on it's not just a gradual touch of the brakes if you touch them the air fry is flying everything you've screwed down comes out the wall so you, <laughs> It's just something you've got to be wary of. So yeah. Do you have any idea what the sort of value is now? Do you get people approaching about selling A lot, it? yeah. So <laughs> for me, I would never sell it. It will go to the scrap when I'm done with it because it's what we've built. Yeah. Or I'll, when we buy this land, that's the plan. It's a three, four year plan for us to buy some land and put that on the land and we'll, I'll rent it out. I'll do something with it. But we got off of 40 grand for it the other week. Oh. And for me, it's, for me, I don't want to do that because it's, personal, it's too personal, it? yeah. do you know what I mean? Yes. Like it's, for us that's home and yeah. that's what it is, the kids help build it, everyone's involved. We've got a great bunch of friends that, and the bus club that come and help every weekend. Don't really, it wasn't just us lot doing it, we had some advice, people helping, people you know, work, people even sweeping it for us, we can just crack on getting stuff done. So it was very much a group effort from everyone, I wouldn't take all the credit for it because it's not. And there was a lot in there that I would have done differently if I did it myself, but after advice from people that have done such things with other vehicles, like how to secure things, build that backwards so when you brake it doesn't move. It's still a good thing that I've added up to something that when I drive it now, nothing, nothing falls over. It, it's just a nice drive. What about yeah. keeping keep warm? Keeping warm, yeah, so great question. So these leads, it's 9 kVA. So last winter we had it on number two out of four and I was in my underwear. It's absolutely roasted. It does lose heat quickly, even with it fully insulated. It, it's a lot of glass in there still. So there's at the cab there's a door that swings round or stops the breezes coming from the driver's cab because they leak notoriously. Curtains go around the front to the front door here and the front window. So we're actually enclosed downstairs, you can't see with the blinds down. And then there's doors at the top of the stairs in the kitchen which stop the breezes coming in from there. And then in the winter when it's mega cold, we put a curtain up. As you go down our corridor, um, you go around the corner. Our bedroom's in front to the left and there's a to the right. So we built it, so you can put a, a pole up and another fleece blanket there, which stops breezes coming from the bus. So we're sort of enclosed with an easy heat up fully in just the two rooms. So it gets very hot very quickly. In the winter, we have snow. Um, woke up one day, we'll dry in the morning. The next day, white over. Didn't put the diesel heater on. Took the fuse out when I went to work because I knew the temperature was dropping, but no one there, so took the fuse out. Forgot to put it back in on the timer. Woke up to icicles coming off the rivets from the condensation. Um, 25 minutes later, they'd gone and again it was warm. But we do have to run it constantly when we're in to keep it hot. I like turning down the gills to turn back up. So it's that balance. In the summer, it gets hot. 
So if you came in yesterday, it was getting pretty warm in there, but I would say it's about as warm as it gets. It's about 24, 25. We painted the roof white to reflect the heat, which helps a lot. The blinds keep the hot air out as well, um, which helps. There's lots of windows, and we've got um, three massive roof vents in the roof, which complete the heat as well. Random question, the one we get asked a lot is the kitchen's at the front upstairs. Again, heat. I don't want to cook lasagna. I don't like the smell of meat after I've eaten. So if you're cooking downstairs, I've then got another floor for it to go through. The heat's got to go somewhere. So the kitchen went upstairs. Nicole likes cooking. There's a nice view when she cooks down most days. And the heat goes straight out the skylight and it's easy to clean. So we don't have the issue with smells and the door closes. So it's just not to wash up till next morning. It's, good. it's out of sight, out of mind. Most of the time. Yeah. 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 Um, for the children, do you prefer living in a house or on a bus? Do you answer that question? What do you prefer, living in the bus or on the house? Bus. Mm. Why do you prefer living in the bus? <laughs> Can you give some examples why? Have you gone all shy? Have you gone all shy? Come on, you'll, you'll be able to answer your question. Every day is like a little Yeah, so I think, like, an example was we've got a park up um, in Rotherham, which is near the canal. One side is the canal, one side is the train line. The kids wave at the train drivers from the still works. They beep in the horns. They think it's fantastic. But then someone that walked past the bus walk and the dog having a chat with them one evening told us that on the canal, about half a mile down the way, two bridges, and there's actually a family of bats. And at sunset they come out, so they've gone down, watched the bats for an evening, which I've never done in 31 years of being alive. And nothing I've ever seen, but these have got to experience at an age where if they want to do it again, they can they can just walk down there now from the bus, and it's a park that they ask to go back to because they can go and do this sort of thing. So it, it's nice for the learning new things that they wouldn't learn in a house. So Phoebe's learning to use QuickBooks um, for the business, so she's very good at generating an invoice now and sending it out, which I think is a very good skill to have. An algebra, I've never used algebra ever since. I'm sure it's got a purpose somewhere, yeah, but she's learning about fat. And yeah. for me, I'm just got, I've got that time now to sit with her and show her these things. So she always asks, and when I was in the house, I was like, leave me alone, I'm busy. I've got to get this done, because I've got another six clients to send them out to her now. It's just a bit more calm. we've just there. changed our mindset, haven't we? That everything's yeah. not as rushed as what it needs to be. Yeah, everything's just, it's one pace, it gets done when it's done. And because I haven't got the stress of having to think I've got to get six more jobs in this month to pay someone else's mortgage, I just, it's almost like I don't care. It's awful to say I do care about my business and all my staff, and the staff are very well looked after. But I don't have to worry if I'm taking no money home at the end of the month, it doesn't matter. I've still got what I've still got my family, I've got my own, I have to do it all. So you're long term as well, so I'm very conscious that we've got four girls and there's gonna be a lot of growing to happen. So <laughs> Phoebe, <laughs> Phoebe's got three years till she sort of hits thirteen, where I think at that sort of age you want a bit more of your own space. So it's a three to four year plan. We obviously pay for the bus in two months time, that's, that's done then. It just maintenance cost to keep it going. Bit of debt to clear, that takes us probably six months. Then I've got time to save for land. I ironically do marketing for um, estate agencies. We put all the signs up for them in Rotherham. So people want to be able to this bit of land to put up to sell. So we've got these opportunities coming up where we're going to build something like a container house, I think. So we can look a little bit different again, but I can build a structure and it's feasible for us to live in straight away. And I can add to it when they want their own little bit added on, add another bit on. And live off the land a little bit. We've got a little lot in Rodden that we still have and we, we grow from, and which we enjoy doing, so we've got time to actually do it now. Um, but that's the long term plan. And then either the bus will sign, because she's getting old, do you know what I mean? They won't run forever. Oh, beside the bus and use it as whatever it's going to be. I'm also looking for another one to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at coaches next, like maybe like a triaxle coach, something much bigger, and just see how it goes. Get some um, land so the kids can just run, run free. Because they don't like being confined, as you can see. There's <laughs> <laughs> always a game in something. How do you do your laundry? Good question. So we've got two sets of clothes, week one and week two. After week one's been one, it goes to the laundrette. <laughs> then we pick weeks two up and wear them and just alternate it. Um, got a good relationship with the laundrette in Rotherham. Um, there's also the ones at the garage as well. We did try them. A lot of dog hairs and a lot of horse hair, I think, that have been used in them. So we used the local laundrettes. There's plenty dotted around. 
in South Yorkshire still, it seems to be quite an in thing. In the winter, they're so busy, they're queuing to go in to dry the clothes. It's crazy. I've not looked in a laundrette since I went camping when I was probably about five or six. But um, in terms of they're still being used, they're, they're busy and it works for us. Um, our next door neighbour on the field, they've actually got a little washing machine, which I've never seen before. We've actually ordered one because they're great. We had a nosebleed a few weeks ago, blood everywhere. And we had to wait for it to go to London. Luckily it came out, but it was waiting. So we've, it will fit underneath our kitchen unit. And if we get an emergency, I need a shirt or something like that happens. We've got a little washing machine coming to go on the bus as well. I just couldn't justify a full-size washing machine like you do on the coaches because when you've got these on the second set of clothes today already, like it's, it's too much water to carry. It just, it's not feasible for us to carry any more than that. That's what that's what we do. It costs us, it probably costs us what, 20 quid a week? The wash, yeah, about 20 quid a week. And that's with it all nicely folded up in the bags. And it's just pick it up and chuck it in the wardrobe and it's there for the next week. So it, 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 again, it's just outweighing that cost of putting all the infrastructure in for having a washing machine to just giving it to someone else to do and have the time with the kids, not seeing the laundry for three hours watching it spin round by the old Emma adverts, if you remember them. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit chaotic. It's just, it's just us. This is us. This is it. It's how it is. But yeah, we enjoy it, and until we stop enjoying it, we'll probably keep doing it. Because it, it, it just gives us the opportunity to do stuff like this and meet different people where before we'd be sat in the house and not meet no one. So yeah, it's nice. So thank you for coming. All right. Thank you.